connects a team of medics from the Evelina London Children's Hospital to the chairman of a football league club in Kent and a hospital in Gaul, Sri Lanka. In July 2003, Paul Scally's son Elliot sadly passed away at Demelza House in Kent following a condition caused by a heart defect. Paul set up the Elliot Scally Trust, which raised funds for both the Melza and the Evelina before joining the medics to form the new Take Heart Mercy mission. So the charity is a group of medics from the Evelina Children's Hospital in London uh, who have come together voluntarily to go to Sri Lanka uh, to help children with um, heart diseases, diseases pretty much that are life-threatening. Uh, and children who have a limited life expectancy. Since 2004, Paul has been friends with Connell and John and has been loosely involved over the past few years in their missions to Sri Lanka under a previous charity run by an expat, Sri Lankan Jaya Mir, who passed away in January 2011. The three men decided to further this good work and set up Take Heart Mercy Mission, of which they're all trustees. Always the object was to, to teach, uh, to help uh, the local doctors on the ground and to provide them with, if possible, additional equipment and motivation to do this type of work. More recently we're trying to look at more wider uh, fundraising to see whether there's items of equipment and whether we can re-equip and better equip the unit in Sri Lanka to do the job which they're, which they're doing. 14 heart unit staff from the Evelina volunteered to make the 16 hour trip to Sri Lanka to carry out heart surgery on the children. Every year, around 2,500 children are born with heart defects in Sri Lanka, with more than half of these needing intervention through cardiology or open-heart surgery. Sri Lanka is now a stable, developing and safe country of just under 21 million people, and having been previously locked in conflict for over 30 years, the country is now promoting tourism and commerce as a way of recovery to help its people to a better future. Word has spread that the Mercy Mission is visiting the Karapatiya Hospital and many families with sick children arrive hoping for surgery. John and Carolina immediately set about scanning the first arrivals, assessing cases suitable for surgery. First child up for surgery is Manushi Dinavmi. Aged 2 years, 11 months, weighing 8.1 kilos, she has a defect between the small and large chambers of the heart which has stunted her growth and affected her breathing. She arrived at the hospital with mum Dinusha after a 5-hour bus ride. Dr Marilyn McDougall is carrying out final tests before Minushi enters theatre. The surgery, if successful, would enable her to lead a normal, healthy life. Before we go into theatre, everyone has to wear scrubs, obviously for, for, for obvious reasons. Um, the little baby we just saw now, she's going to have her anaesthetic. We're going to go in now and, and look at the new theatre. So our first baby today is a two and a half year old little girl. Dr Chin, Chris is anaesthetising uh, Manushi at the moment. And Manushi has got a very severe form of congenital heart disease that's essentially called an atrioventricular septal defect. And in an atrioventricular septal defect, there are three components that I have to address to fully correct the heart condition. Every parent will appreciate the emotion and pressure on a family when surgery on their loved ones is necessary, let alone heart surgery on a child. But mum Dinusha knows the surgery is essential to give her daughter a chance of a normal, healthy life. really impressed me um, being my first trip uh, like this really is how all the staff are working together and yeah, the doctors and everyone is a tremendous uh, atmosphere. We work together like this at home actually there's a good team actually. I'm picked. I'm just really pleased to be here actually because it's been a two-year um, layoff as you know from the last trip and uh, the technicalities of getting back here again have been difficult so I think we're all very relieved to be back and working at Karapate again. The team are operating in an old hospital but with three new modular theatres donated in 2011 by the French government post tsunami. Whilst the theatres are modern, there's only one working heart bypass machine, so only one theatre can be used at a time. 
It is one of Take Heart's goals to raise enough funding to fit out the remaining two theatres, thus allowing many more procedures to take place. Manoush's surgery takes about three hours. The team are keen to reverse the anaesthetic on her, awake her in theatre to encourage the heart to start functioning correctly before she leaves for the intensive care unit where Mercy Mission staff will take control of her treatment. Just an hour later, and mum Dinushi, dad Prasad and five-year-old sister Malshi are able to see their daughter. Manushi tells her mum she's not happy, but wants to have some chocolate and go home, just 60 minutes after leaving theatre. Intensive care unit staff make Manushi more comfortable and Connell continues with the next patient. One child after another goes through the scanning unit. On this mission, Carolina scanned 137 children. Unfortunately, due to time and resources, not all can be operated on. And for some, the news was not what they wanted to hear. It's never easy to break. It's essentially bad news. They built up their hopes on coming here that we'll be able to do something. Um, I guess you, I, I, I don't, as they say, you get used to it, but it's not the first patient we've had where that is the situation. But it's never easy because, of, as I say, the parents are, are upset and they have a hope and expectation that you'll be able to do something and you feel like you've let them down a bit. But we can't, in, in uh, fairness, proceed with something that we don't believe we can actually do. Over a period of six operating days, allowing for the day of arrival to scan the first group of children and a day at the end of the trip to allow for emergency re-ops, the team aimed to carry out three operations a day, which on this trip was achieved on all bar one day, where an operation on Sayumi Fipsarin, an 11-year-old girl, lasted about seven hours until just before midnight. Sayumi provides the team with their biggest challenge yet. It's been discovered both her arteries are pumping blood out of the right ventricle of the heart. There are other complications which can only be determined once Connell is able to see inside her heart. Her condition has turned her blue, and the team are concerned over a lack of growth. Her weight at just 20 kilos, about half the weight of a healthy child of the same age, and her vulnerability to infections. Well, this girl, she's just been anaesthetized at the moment. Chris is uh, anaesthetizing her. And uh, she is 11 years of age. She's only about 20 kilograms in weight. So she's grossly undernourished, under, uh, underdeveloped, really. And that's because she's got a severe form of congenital heart disease, which has been unoperated on. Um, the heart disease that Subsarum has is, um, it's a severe form of, of general heart disease that we would see in the UK and operate on at a much earlier age. And clearly Sipsarin's had a fairly poor quality of life so far, you know, you know, in Very 11 dark. young years. Yeah. And um, if, if she doesn't have the surgery, that will continue, if not worse. And of course she'll die. She will die, yeah. yeah so, will die. so really, today will be the moment for her. Make a break this day will be the start of a fabulous life for her. Yeah, it's a make yeah. or break day for her. Because her oxygen levels are so low, Sayumi continues to develop brain abscesses. She had one drain just two weeks before surgery. With his many years of experience, Connell has never seen a heart condition quite as complicated as this case. If Sayumi had been born in the UK, she would have been treated early in life. But since she's been left untreated for so long, the team are forced to operate despite severe risks. The seven hour procedure is complicated and complex. Connell and his team work hard to give Sayumi a chance of a better future.
Lanka, previously known as Ceylon and amongst other things famous for its tea plantations, elephants and beautiful coastline, was of course affected severely by the tsunami of Boxing Day 2004, which claimed the lives of over 40,000 people on this island and displaced a further 2.5 million. 1,500 people alone were killed when the huge waves hit the Colombo to Gull train just a short distance from Gaul Station. Sri Lankan people have shown great strength and resilience to overcome huge hardship in their lives and today they are rebuilding and looking forward. Whilst the sadness, disappointment and despair of losing a child hits all the team hard, they know it's important to keep focused on the successes of these trips, the need to keep working hard to help other children survive and there are many, many successes to speak of. The team continues to work tirelessly in 12-hour shifts to ensure as many children as possible get the chance of a better life to which they're surely entitled. Three days after surgery, little Manushi and now a very happy mum leave intensive care for the general ward where grandma and family greet her. of sadness and despair are replaced by happiness and smiles and at this moment the team know they've done a great job and what we're trying to do here in Sri Lanka is not just treat children and do heart surgery on between 15 and 20 cases a year but we're also trying to help the local surgeons to improve to improve their knowledge to be more comfortable and confident in doing difficult heart surgery um, and in the fullness of time with training with equipment um, and with knowledge, of course, we would hope that they will have enough surgeons doing paediatric surgery to give many more children a chance of life. Well, I, I think that um, if Elliot was alive today, um, he'd be uh, pretty proud of his mum there. take for granted a lot of things back at home um, and coming over here I just find it an amazing experience to work with the local teams um, and I've learned so much from them about their resourcefulness and they've been a brilliant help with us as well and I think they'll take a lot from us as well. We come from a place where we're so privileged to be able to provide healthcare to everybody um, at the highest level with all the mod cons that we can and so it's great to be able to use our skills and transfer them over somewhere that hasn't got that facility and kind of make a difference, a real difference to some people's lives. One of the main reasons that I wanted to come was really to give the technicians here an insight into how we do things back at the Evelina. Um, they are a very good crew here, but unfortunately their techniques um, have really lagged behind um, where we are today in the world. In cardiac surgery. I think I really wanted to come here because 
I've had some experience of, of working in paediatric intensive care in the UK and wanted to see how it works in a, a third world country and, and see what we could do to make a difference out here really. This has been my second trip and it's been wonderful to be able to come back. Um, firstly to work with the team as I did before, which I thoroughly enjoyed, um, but mostly to see the children who we operated on last time. I think that was the most exciting moment. I came out here to, to help, um, to work with a team to be able to help children that would actually, um, if left to the system at, at the moment, they probably wouldn't survive very long. Um, I came on the trip just to be a nurse and to look after the children that have really severe heart conditions and to be able to make a difference to them. I volunteered to come along on this trip with Take Heart Mercy Mission to Sri Lanka because I'd heard such great things about it previously. I really wanted to get involved and help out as much as I could with the children. My name is Carolina and I've come with the Take Heart Mercy Mission to Sri Lanka to share our expertise uh, with the good people of Sri Lanka and help some really adorable children and also represent our hospital and all the good work that we do. The reason I came to Sri Lanka with the Take Heart Mercy Mission is because I feel that I can make a difference to the children out here when we operate. I have been coming to Sri Lanka since the first mission and I love the country and the people here. I've come uh, to Sri Lanka with Take Heart Mercy Mission uh, because it's an opportunity to spend some time working abroad with foreign doctors and foreign nurses uh, and making a difference to the lives of the children in this country. I was looking forward to be able to come here and actually be able to do something to try and make a difference to the children here that um, don't normally, aren't normally able to have surgery. I've come to Sri Lanka because I think we should be using our uh, expertise to help not only children in the UK, but also those who don't have access to, to uh, healthcare elsewhere. About 10 years ago, I started coming out to Sri Lanka to do children's heart surgery. And it's my real goal to keep continuing to bring a team of doctors and nurses from Guy's and St. Thomas's, Evelina Children's Hospital, to Sri Lanka to continue that work.